Well, I had a little bit of a uh, detour. Uh, this is uh, the throttle, and it kept it popped out on me when I was trying to shove this plastic ring in. I was not very happy. I was able to uh, send the guy a nasty gram, and he was very nice. He called me the next day. Super nice guy. Got to give uh, Electric Bike Outfitters a who provided this kid a shout out. He went through it, he sent a video showing how this works. This ring right here I thought had to shove over this. It just lays in there and then you just slide this on. Uh, I'm concerned this is going to pop off but I'm going to, I'm getting a replacement but I'm just going to set this one in here. It's easy to replace the hand grip and everything else so we'll uh, put this back in there and this will slide here and this ring goes over and just slides in and sort of locates itself right there. It just has to float. It doesn't have to do anything else. So we'll set that about there. That's right for the throttle with my hand. Just normal thumb wheel right in that position. We can adjust it a little bit if we need to. And I'm going to secure that and quickly before this tries to pop off put the uh, I need one smaller here uh, put the hand grip on to sort of hold everything in place. And I can pop it off in a minute and uh, get back my, or put the repaired or replacement one in there. So I'm going to just screw this thing in place and uh, leave it be for the time being. Nothing getting in the way, it's not binding, it's working pretty well. The other issue, and uh, let's see if I can get the bike in place, I'll uh, point down to it, is uh, I have to pull these cranks off, I have to mount the sensor in there, and I believe that the, let's show you the sensors. It consists of a ring with the, and it's just to hold it in place and this will set in and the bottom bracket kind of has a flange that sticks out and will screw in and hold this in place on the frame of the bike and this if you see has these very weird little striations you can actually twist this and slide it on slide it onto the crank uh, with the little buttons facing this way and get the spacing just right and it's not going to go anywhere and so this goes on the crank this is stationary uh, on the frame of the bike and uh, I can do it on either side. I think most people put it on the right side, so I'm going to leave it there. But I'll probably have to pull the cranks and pull the uh, cassette out, they call it. A cassette is just that holds the bearings. Sometimes they're sealed bearings, sometimes they're not. But I'm going to have to pull that out in order to get to it uh, and mount all this stuff. Now I may just take it to a bike shop to do that, but we'll just see how difficult it is. In the meantime, I'm going to finish assembling all the handlebar uh, work here. Yeah, let me point up a little bit. <laughs> I'm uh, an amateur at this. Get all the get all the controls on. I have the other. I have the LED module right here, which is going to go right over here. I need to leave room for my headlight, uh, so I may scoot things around. The uh, Katai Nito cycling computer, which goes right here. I, after a very long period of time, figured out how to program the clock correctly. But every time I do it, I forget how and I have to look it up. And there's two buttons, one on the side of the computer, one on the top. And uh, I was pushing on the side one when I needed to push on the top one for two seconds. And once I figured that out, everything was fine. I also uncalibrated the wheel size, but now I've fixed that. So, so we're uh, kind of getting back on track after a two-day delay. But once again, uh, the gentleman, I forgot his name, I'll get it, uh, who runs uh, uh, Electric Bike Outfitters, is a real quality guy, stayed calm, really helped me out. He's dealt with <laughs> enough irate customers, not because of bad things, but because of just things people didn't understand. I said, you know, I'd like to help you on the manual, and I think that uh, I'd like to, you know, add maybe six sentences, and it would really, and maybe two diagrams, not a whole lot, and it would really solve the problem. So with that we're going to finish mounting everything on the handlebars and when I'm done I'll show you the results. Uh, one little addition. 
I believe I have the right cassette pulling tool. I'll pull it out of the bag and show you. And it goes clockwise to remove on the right side, and you have to be mindful of that. There it is. And uh, if I had some better lighting here, that'd be helpful. <laughs> the whole video thing. And then uh, it will be improved. And this is a uh, crank pulling tool. And uh, it essentially just holds on to the threads on the outside of the cranks, which is part of the crank. It stays on the crank. And the centerpiece screws in and pushes against the bit coming out of the crank. And the combination of the two will pop the cranks out. They claim they rotate and counter-rotate. I'm not sure that's the case. I'm just going to have to find out. Uh, I won't ruin anything. These threads you want to be very careful with so you don't cross-thread them on your crank or you'll be an unhappy camper. Uh, this one you really can't screw up. You go in there, you, you counterclockwise unscrew the left side, clockwise to unscrew the right side, and the crank should come apart. And then I'll fiddle-faddle and see how this all sets. Some people glue uh, what they call the sensor on, and I'm believing See, they're magnetic, so this sensor gets glued on on the right side or is encapsulated between the circular part of the bike frame and the lip on the uh, bottom bracket, if you want to call it that, that gets removed uh, when I unscrew it with this tool. So that uh, will work on, too, in the next few days. I hope to get this all done by the weekend. I really would like to use the bike in anger. All right, uh, after several hours of messing around, I managed to cram everything in. Uh, let's start from the far left. I've got all the brakes adjusted as well as I can. I have the rear view mirror, hand grip, brake lever level with the other brake lever, the rear level, both sides. The left gear shift, which was quite the squeeze, I had to bend the bracket up a little bit to clear the computer, which is used for the electric bike. I have my headlight, it's aligned. I put the battery pack on the stem, that's where it normally goes. I have a Mito Kati computer here, and I adjusted the time for that. I have my Garmin GPS, and then the right shifter, brake, and uh, hand grip. This hand grip was a little tight. I had to move things out a little bit to the left, but frankly, not a real problem. I have a cap for that right side that's going to find. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to work on installing the uh, battery here on the down tube. That's where it belongs. And then uh, we'll put the controller on the bike rack. Eventually I'm going to put a pannier back there, a pannier or whatever you want to call it. In the meantime, I'll leave it as is. And uh, then the last thing I'll do is the crank sensor, and then we're about done. Okay, uh, let's just show you what I'm doing here uh, before the battery dies. Uh, let's zoom out here. This is the cassette, uh, or the lower bracket that I removed, and we're going to install the rotating sensor right there on this piece, and the uh, fixed sensor on the inside right here as soon as I can find it. Okay, so I've just hand placed the sensor and uh, we're having a little low battery issue here, but uh, let me get this thing straightened out. So we've hand placed the fixed sensor. It will screw in to the bike with the bottom bracket and then those little uh, metal spots are actually magnetic. I believe this needs to slide in further so I have to uh, test that and see how that's going to work with the crank. And we'll do that and then reinstall everything. And that sensor, and uh, when those spin, when you uh, uh, pedal, that sets the speed at which you're trying to pedal. And uh, this whole system is part of what's known as a cadence sensor. Okay, um, I had alluded to it and had some blurry images earlier, but what I wanted to show you was that the crank sensor which is actually the fixed portion, which is on, excuse the heater, which is on this side. It's clamped in between the little cap that actually holds the cassette in place, this little ring here you can see, and the frame. 
and it actually screws in, stays exactly in place, it's the perfect size. Then, there's a uh, magnetic wheel. You can see the sensors on the outside, but they're actually also on the inside. If you look carefully, there's uh, little dots and they actually protrude through. And I believe you can run it both directions, because I was unable to put it on this side. And why was that? Because the crank openings for that lowest gear are too wide for the diameter of the wheel. So I had to move it to the other side of the bike. You just flip the uh, sensor wheel over and there are little arrows indicating the direction of travel. I doubt you can see them, but they're there all along the, uh, the sensor. So with that, I'm gonna put the crank on the other side back on and finishing the wiring for the uh, system. I'll need to take this bottle off. I'll take that rack off there. I may not need to. Uh, that holds a uh, uh, pump and I never use that. And I believe I'm going to mount the controller on the mountain rack here. I'll need to get some spacers but I gotta go to the hardware store anyways and uh, make a nice job of setting that box on. Let me show you the box. It's just a very large plastic box. I'm not sure which way is up. Maybe that way is up. Looks like it. But uh, without too much trouble, I can get isolated spacers. I might actually even have some that will get this off the rack a little bit and let it sort of float so it doesn't shake itself to death. Okay, so those are my next few jobs is to do this mount, remove that, and put the crank back on and we should be done. I've already tightened down the uh, the cassette, it has those little ribbed uh, indentations and there's a tool which uh, helps remove that and that is sitting right here on my torque wrench. It doesn't protrude very, very far into the uh, uh, receptacle on the bike and so you have to keep it really really straight in order that you don't uh, strip it or do other bad things to it and I'm not sure why that is but I gave it plenty of torque and it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, that combined with the puller I used to take the actual bicycle cranks off, uh, which is sitting right here, not a good place for it, but uh, this uh, screws into the crank here and uh, it threads this plunger in and will push the crank out uh, once you've got the bolt that's sitting in there out. This one has the bolt in there. Yes, it does. It's kind of dark, but there it is. And the other one, I'll just bolt it back in. But I can take things on and off with these now quite easily. I know how. I know which way to go. Interestingly enough, on this right side, to remove it, you go clockwise, which is the reverse of most screws, and counterclockwise to tighten it. So you have to be mindful of that. The right side always does that on bikes, at least modern bikes, even this one, which is a 1989 model. Okay, as you can see, I've got this crank on, I've just got the bolt uh, loosely put in there. The crank is directly opposite <laughs> the other side. You definitely want that, otherwise you'd be in trouble. And that's all done. Oddly enough, these are 14 millimeter bolts and there is not a lot of room in there for a ratchet, so I end up using a specific, well socket I meant, so I use a specific socket that this 12 point, they tend to be thinner walled and is able to squeeze in past the uh, opening in the crank to tighten that down. So we'll do that right now. I'll even let you uh, join me here. Now this does go clockwise, so it's not an issue. And you'll have to hand spin it first to get it to see. And once that's done, which it is, then we can uh, tighten it up. It's kind of hard for me to do from here, but there you go. And I'll finish uh, torquing that.